so many people suffer brain injuries and if you could wave a magic wand, you would just hope for some regeneration of the injured portion of her brain. And my guess is in the case of Anne, the actual total volume of cells that are damaged is quite small. It could be this, you know, half the size of your thumb, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a relatively small, but it just happened to be in the most precious part of real estate in her entire body. So do we know or do you have any point of view on the potential future of stem cell-like interventions for the purpose of uh, re regeneration, specifically in the CNS? Yeah, I mean, this is an area that I think got a lot of focus and attention maybe about 10 or 15 years ago. And I would say largely the results were pretty modest. Uh, yeah, at best. Um, yeah, at best. Um, it's coming back now because of a lot of cell-based therapies, organoids, um, building miniature models of brains um, on cell cultures, basically. Um, I think the first things that we're going to see and where I am seeing some promise is uh, very focal delivery in replacing cells that have been lost in small targets of the brain. So back to Parkinson's mm -hmm. disease where you've got degeneration of dopaminergic neurons and the substantia nigra. The goal is can you replace and basically transplant some stem cells into that part of the brain. Um, and or, remind or, me why the cells in the substantia nigra go, is it an autoimmune, like what, do we know what's killing them? Um, I think there's a lot of, um, a lot of, inform it could be multiple fold. It's partly genetic. Mm. Um, there are certain genes that predispose to degeneration there. Um, there's certain environmental toxins that can cause the degeneration. And then there's like a huge bucket like we still don't know, you know, what's causing that. Um, but at the end of the day, there is a degeneration of those very specialized cells. Most of the treatments are around dopamine replacement yeah. right, medications. And how close do you think we are towards um, transplant? Well, um, it's already been done, actually, like 20, 30 years ago. Oh, really? I wasn't Yeah, aware. using okay. fetal uh, grafts. and They just didn't take? Um, some of them took. In fact, um, patients, some patients got benefit from it. The side effects were also fairly severe. Um, there what? were a variety of different reasons. What kind that, of side effects? Um, like if you have too much dopamine, you can actually get dyskinesias, so hyper movement. So Parkinson, one of the cardinal yeah. symptoms of Parkinson's. Hypo movement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, bradykinesia specifically, uh, where you have slowed movements, slowed initiate movements as well. Um, but if you have cells that are just pumping out dopamine, they can also be putting out too much and you get the opposite effect. So it's not as simple as just putting them in there. They actually have to be tuned yeah. in the right way to put out the right levels. And so there's a new generation of new therapies that uh, we're really interested in trialing at UCSF um, that are much better cell models, much better control of dopamine that's involved. We have much better delivery systems to make sure that the di distribution and, and, um, I mean, could you imagine that? Could you imagine engineering your way out of Parkinson's disease? We're working on it. What about synthetic cells where you completely get to control it, right? So again, you have the substrate problem, but if it's truly a synthetic cell, then presumably it can make dopamine as well. I mean, yeah. as opposed to an implantable sort of slow leak dopamine that you come up with some slick way to refill. But, right. um, what do you think is more likely? kind of the, the more pure engineering approach or the more biologic transplant approach where you just try to tune it? Uh, the near term, of course, is taking some cell cultures that yep. are not like purely synthesized. That still, I think, is a huge goal yep. outside of just brain. Like, can you generate a cell de novo um, without and some, what without is, some that, origin? And does cell? that require immune uh, modulation? Oh, absolutely. So it's yeah. a full transplant. Yeah, so a lot of these patients uh, initially will be on immunosuppression for that. But that's also improved a lot, yeah. right? Like that's just- As immunosuppressive as if they had a kidney transplant or a liver or heart transplant? Yes. Wow. Yeah, but I think that's primarily right now the level of precaution, mm. you know, and there is progress being made in trying to make these things um, as least immunogenic as possible. Um, and th that's where a lot of the engineering actually is focused on, is just make it um, like the least immunogenic uh, to avoid a rejection scenario. 
So I am excited about that. And that's some of the biological engineering that I was talking about, like biotechnology or the future of technology, we really be coming back to the biology, moving a little bit away from the uh, electrical engineering. What do you think the world looks like in 2040? Which major problems that stand in front of you today do you expect to fall and what will be the implications? I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.